All right. Uh, good evening, YouTube. Um, for all of those that have um, viewed my videos, looked at them, uh, maybe got ideas from it all, uh, thanks for the support. Um, I'm not very good at this stuff. I'm, I'm just a pure amateur. Um, I just like to tinker, and boats is kind of one of the things I tinker with. Um, the original video I made way back when, I'm not even sure how long it was, uh, probably close to six, seven years anyways, uh, maybe even longer. Um, I made that so that people could get ideas on how to build a skin on frame boat and not have to go and buy a kit or anything like that. Um, everything I bought, you know, for the original boat, I bought local. Um, some of the wood that I had, it was just scraps in my shop. Um, it was, you know, it was just a throw together thing. It was more of a experiment than anything else. Um, that being said, that boat has been outside all this time, except for um, probably the last two months. Um, I took the old skin off of it, um, a twig or a, a limb actually, it had fallen off a tree and it did some damage to the side. Um, but really, I could have floated that boat. It was more cosmetic than anything. It was high enough. I could have floated that boat, and I, I would have taken it on any trip, um, you know, outside of maybe some, like, Class 3 whitewater or something like that. Um, class 2, maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyways, it wasn't really designed for whitewater, but still, I would have, uh, I would have been willing to take this boat anywhere. Um, it was still seaworthy. It was still functional um it wasn't pretty it had tree sap and everything else it was just you know it was more gray than it was tan like the original boat was um that being said that test of all that weather and everything uh, was quite impressive um i have now begun reskinning this boat um i have the skin essentially on it now um and I've changed a couple things that I wanted to update you guys on. Um, one, when, in the original video, I used a, uh, a tape that, that seamstresses use um, to attach fabrics together so that they could sew them. And essentially, it, all it was was, um, you know, plastic glue, just like you would with a glue gun. Um, it was just in tape form. So, rather than use that, I decided this time that I would just use a glue gun and glue sticks. And, you know, really, that worked. It, it worked really well. Um, so, this time around, I wanted to kind of uh, do an up, update video of what changes I've made. Uh, what fabric that I, that I use this time around. And, um, you know, basically, I, I guess in the original video, I don't believe I showed how I did the bow and stern um, layovers. Um, you might have caught it in the video, I'm not sure. But I'll show you that uh, now so that you understand how this, this thing is glued together and then how very strong it is um i have a piece that i experimented on for the glue sticks and the fabric that i'm using now and um, i'll show you that as well so i guess uh let's get started and again i thank you guys um I, for all the emails and and all the contacts all the comments um I, i'm really uh really happy it's you know, they come in two or three, you know, in, in a year, you know, but I still, I, I still get emails. I still get comments. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of happy. Um, I'm willing to start making more videos. 
Um, life has come around where I have a little more time to do this kind of stuff. And I'm not quite as shy as I was when I did the original video. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe this will work better. So let's get down with it. Thanks a lot. So, uh, first thing, let's show you the glue that I, I used to attach the fabric to the frame. Um, essentially, it's just glue sticks. Um, these are extra long. I forget where I got these. I've had these for years. Uh, actually, I might have even had these when I did the original boat. But this is the label. Um, essentially, it's uh, extra strength or... or um, maximum strength glue formula it's uh, it's made for wood glass metal um, plastics so uh, it, it really does pretty well um, one stick does quite a quite a bit essentially what I'm doing is running uh, two two uh, you know maybe a sixteenth to a little over a sixteenth uh, beads down every attachment um, length the uh, the keel and the, the um, outwalls you know little glue gun again had this for years uh, my you know my wife and my grandkids and everybody use this for crafts um, you know it did fine um, I just recently bought a little more heavy-duty one uh, with some uh, larger sticks but this did the job. It, it was uh, pretty simple. Um, something else you're going to need, obviously, uh, you're going to need a sharp pair of scissors. And I sharpened these right before I started this boat. And uh, just the trimming that I've done so far, they're beginning to dull up. So this fabric kind of uh, eats the edge on a pair of scissors. Um, of course, you're going to need. Some paper towels, you always got to have paper towels around. Uh, essentially, what I really need those for is any excess glue that gets on the iron. Speaking of the iron, it's a cheap $10 iron from Walmart. Um, my wife didn't want me using her fabric iron. I don't understand why, but you know, hey. Um, but anyways, the paper towels, uh, mainly to keep the pad on the iron clean from any glue that might spill out of seams and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you just wipe it off while it's hot. It's really easy to keep it clean. So, uh, the fabric. This is the fabric I'm working. Um, it's from Sailcloth. It's a 60 inch, 6 ounce white Dacron polyester. Um, mine cost me 35 bucks. Um, this is the company, Sail, uh, Sailcloth. Um, you can find them online. They're really, really happy to get your order, and uh, I think they'll do anything for you if you really ask them to. So, um, I was impressed. It, it came within a week. It, it shipped really, really fast. Um, it's uh, a touch harder to work with than the original polyester that I put on the original boat. Um, that seemed to be a little more stretchy. Um, they shrink about the same. They act about the same when they shrink. Um, so I, I'm getting the same tension that I did on the original uh, skinning with this. So uh, hopefully, you know, you guys will have the same positive uh, experience I had with Sail Cloth. Um, nice company. Okay, now um, let's talk a little bit about um, attaching the fabric to the boat. Essentially what I've done, um, this is a, a test I did for the glue sticks and the fabric that I, that I bought originally. This is the old fabric, a piece that I had left over. But it's close enough to what I have now that um, I thought, you know, I figured a test would be pretty accurate between the two. Um, the only difference, I think, this is a a less tight weave than the than the new stuff that I'm using from Sailcloth. So, 
Um, essentially what I do is I run two beads of glue along the along the uh, the keel and the outwalls on both sides and then up the uh, stem and the stern or the bow and the stern and um, then the fabric gets laid on and the iron essentially reheats the glue and melts it into the fabric and you can see that it's it's uh, you can see that it's discolored where it melts it in and you would think that you you might have problems along that seam when you go to seal it with urethane um, I didn't originally and I don't expect to this time as well um, the uh, polyurethane just forms in around it and uh, it, it adheres to it as well uh, one thing I want to show you guys um, is the strength of this so when I had this piece put together when I tried to pull laterally along the same plane as the fabric with all my might and all my weight I could not pull the fabric loose from the piece of wood that it just wouldn't come um, and that's where that's where this process works the best because any forces you're going to have on these seams are going to be lateral forces unless you don't put a floor in the boat if you don't put a floor in the boat if somebody steps next to the keel it's possible that they could pop the fabric loose from the keel um, other than that you're not once you do that or once once you glue everything and put it all together you're not going to pull this laterally off the gunnels unless you have a rotten gunnel or something like that um, you know so you're just not going to pull this laterally off um, if you notice when I pulled this fabric off perpendicular you know um, just straight up off like this I literally pulled the piece of wood apart so even in that direction this joint um, is pretty strong it's not as strong as it would be going in the same plane as the fabric um, but it's still enough to where you you start peeling wood apart when you try to take it off so that's how it's done that's how that's how this joint that I'm using works is it it basically it's very strong in a lateral direction and it doesn't want to pull away from the wood so it makes it really easy to stretch the boat makes it really easy to you know get everything sealed um, makes the you know the bow and stern pretty easy to deal with I think so let me clean some of this stuff off and I'll explain to you how I skin the boat and um, we can finish this video up give me a minute and I'll be right back okay um gonna be a little shaky now I'm, I'm handheld so um, you know bear with me essentially I wanted to show you what steps I do with attaching the skin to the boat um, essentially what I do is I start right in the dead center of the boat right on the keel dead center and I work and stretch out to each bow and stern I stretch it right up to the point where the bow and the stern start to curve up and then I leave it and I begin to do the gunnels um, for the gunnels uh, one thing I noticed with this fabric since it is not as stretchy um, it likes to wrinkle a little bit more so you have to be careful with it um, as far as attaching it to the boat so what I did was I started again in the center 
about every three to four inches, I would tack it in for about three or four inches. Um, being very careful to try to leave any wrinkling um, evenly between each of the tack points. And then what I was then what I would do is I would skip about a foot and a half between the midsection and the bow and the stern. And I would stretch that fabric over the bower stern and attach it to the side of the stem. And behind here, there's an attachment point. So not only is it glued here, it is also glued to that stem. There's a probably about an inch and a half pad in there that attaches to the stem. That's very important because when you come to stretch the other side it does not have an attachment point over here its only attachment point is going to be right on the edge of the uh, bower stern stems so essentially what happens is this folds in then you cut it back to wherever you feel is comfortable right here is where my cut is and it's the exact same place where um i cut it last time i skinned the boat and essentially what that what happens is this folds over and is glued to the top of the original piece this side that is overlapping stays taut because you have that extra piece inside the boat that's all that's attached. When you reheat to attach this side, it doesn't let loose. So this tension over here stays tight. And then all this becomes one one heavy glued seam, uh, which seals the boat. And then once you put your polyurethane over top of that, babe, that don't leak. It don't leak at all. Um, and then essentially, once that's done, on both ends, I stretch everything else out. Um, I take all the wrinkles out, work them out with shrinking the fabric, work them out along the edge. Um, it's time consuming. Um, you want to kind of... You want to kind of play with it make sure that you're getting it right um but it stretches really nice i'm really impressed with this fabric um i'll be big i'm uh as soon as i get this reskinned i'll be building a, a 15 or 16 foot tandem for my wife and i um that's coming hopefully this summer if not the spring um but as soon as i get this boat i will start the strong back and putting everything together for that boat um i've got to make all the uh, stations and all for that boat um so really that's uh that's it that's how i skin my boats um i guess i should tell you over the uh, bow and stern i like to put like a skid plate all it is is a uh I, you know I, I use a like a quarter inch piece of ash not even quarter inch probably three sixteenths um bent to the shape of the bow and stern and then what i do on the back of that there's a product called through the roof it's a clear roof sealer for you know like leaks uh, you know somebody you know you, you get a stick through your roof or whatever and you don't want to replace the whole roof you can just buy this stuff uh, it stays very pliable um solid but pliable at the same time and when i took this skin off i literally had to cut those pieces off the boat uh, i had to lift it a little bit cut the through the roof lift it some more cut you know it was uh it was still pliable after six seven years out in the weather and it was still so adhered to the boat that I, I literally had to cut it off in order not to do damage to either the boat or those pieces because I'm going to reuse them uh, as soon as I'm ready to put this thing back together. So 
you know, I use those while it's still wet. Um, that's when I screw this stuff down. Um, so when it does fully cure and fully dry, um, those things ain't going anywhere and they ain't going to leak. Um, I was really happy with it the first time. I'm going to be really happy with it this time, I'm sure. Uh, I'll go right back to you through the roof. That'll be the product I'll use. So with that, um, again, uh, let me do a little goodbye piece for you. And I uh, appreciate it. All right, uh, so again, uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, all the support, all the questions, uh, the interest. Um, I'm hoping you're building nice boats, and I'm hoping you're enjoying those boats, and I hope you build more. Um, it's, you know, it's a nice hobby to have. And when you get done, man, you, you, know, you turn heads when you're on the water. There's no doubt about it. You turn heads when you're driving to or from your put-in. Um, or take-out, whatever. You know. um, when you're on the road, people look. Um, they're like giant Chinese lantern lanterns. They're, uh, the, you know, the woodwork's beautiful. The fabric's beautiful. Um, you can paint them whatever color you want. Me, I like, you know, I like to stay natural. Um, but I love skin on frame boats. And... They're tough. They're tougher than people give them credit for. Um, I've, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube. I forget the names of them. I, uh, I haven't watched them in some time. But I've seen people take these things down to Rio Grande. I've seen them take them down like Class 2 water, Class 3 water. Um, bumping up against rocks and stuff. I, you know, I saw some, uh, one group... Um, they were in the Adirondacks. I'm originally from upstate New York. I know the kind of rocks that they're rubbing these boats up against. And they are some gritty, you know, they're, they're frost-weathered granite, uh, sharp edges, sharp surfaces. Um, they're running... They're running these things right up against them, you know. They're they're floating them over the beaver dams and everything else. So, um, you know, it's worth a try. Give give it a try. Um, they're they're really good boats to to have. They're light. Um, you know, like I said, I'm gonna I'm getting ready to build a, a 15 16 footer for my wife and I. Um, the reason I'm building it is I'm getting older. I can't portage. Uh, heavy boat anymore. I just can't do it. Um, my back is not as nice as it used to be. But I can carry one of these. You know, I can throw one on one shoulder and one on the other if I need to. They're uh, they're pretty light. And you know, and I'm I'm thinking we're going to do some tripping. I'm getting ready to retire. She's getting close to being re ready to retire. Um. We also we're already doing a lot more camping than we we've done in the last you know five or six years, so we're going to be doing a lot more of this stuff. And uh, I need a light boat and something I can enjoy, something to turn heads, you know. And, and these do it. So I hope uh, I hope I've given you some ideas. Uh, I've never I'm not a kit manufacturer. I'm, I'm just some guy that saw the idea and wanted to run with it and see if I could do it um, with local stuff. Um, the original boat, this one right here, is uh, essentially built from pine. Um, it's built from uh, pressure treat lumber. It's built from scraps. Uh, it's got a little bit of plywood in it here and there in the uh, stem and the stern. Um, it's essentially stuff you can go and buy at Lowe's for a little bit of nothing really um, of course the tools I had on hand I have a table saw I have I have all the hand tools I already need so I don't have to buy any of that but um, you could build this boat if you could find somebody that's to size all of your material for you you could build this boat with just hand tools so if you had a friend or, or an uncle or 
whatever that has a table saw that could size your material for you. Um, it's all just about uh, wood selection, getting the tightest grain you can get in the longest length you can get. Um, and teach yourself how to do scarf joints. Um, there's a couple scarf joints in this boat. It's, it's uh, 12 feet long. Um, the uh, the tightest grain that I could get was, I, if I remember correctly, was in 10 feet. So I ended up doing scarf joints. Um, both, you know, they're pretty much midship. You'll never find them. Um, you know, teach yourself how to do a good scarf joint and you you can't find them. You, you really have to look really, really hard to find those scarf joints. But they're there. So, um, tantals, you know. You, you don't need anything fancy to build these things. And, uh, you yeah, know, with that, again, thank you. Um, you know, hopefully I'm getting better at doing these. Hopefully, uh, you know, I'm not talking too fast and I'm not, uh, I'm not losing anybody. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm always here. Uh, just drop me a, drop me a line in the comp, in the, the comments or, uh, send me an email, whatever. Um, I'll answer you when I find your comments. I don't go in here and check every day to see if somebody commented. Um, I don't. Uh, check my paddle spads email as much as I used to So it, you know if I don't get back to you in a day or two um, don't give up on me um, It might be a couple weeks or a month before I respond because I you know, I just haven't looked at that email um, But I do keep the email um, and I do when I do check it I go through it You know whatever I've missed um, I go through it all so Hopefully I'll catch it then so, thank you. Um, enjoy your boat build. See ya.